Hello, everybody. I'm sorry I'm back. It's been a, I mean, I'm not sorry I'm back, but I am sorry that it's been a long time since I've done a video or anything like that. I've been uh, job hunting for a full-time job, and this is, as everyone knows, a side gig, but I just do this on the side now. Oh, that got loud. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, it's a little loud. Turn well, this is 428 Shibuya Scramble. I know very little about it. All I know is it's a Spike Chunsoft game. I hope by me saying that and not claiming that I own it, they don't, uh, <coughs> excuse me, they don't copyright strike me like they did the last, well, not the last time, but the one of the games I played, I got a, an actual strike against, which sucks, but whatever. The, the big thing that bugged me about it was it was, like, I'd, I'd, I'd already been up for three years before they said anything or did anything. But yeah, well, here I am playing this. <clears throat> I am excited, though. I like visual novels a lot, as everyone knows. But, uh, all right, here we go. Bookmark, oh. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Fiction names, characters, places, and instances, either products or organization, you fictitiously in or coincidental. Okay. This is awesome, it's like a police procedure. I think that, of course, was the uh, <sighs> idea. Pretty interesting. Oh, it's a bomb. 
Sorry, I sound dumb. I, I know I don't know if anyone's noticed with these games, but <clears throat> a lot of the time I like to play a game that I don't know anything about, so that you guys are experiencing it the same the, the, at the exact same moment I am, or I'm experiencing it while you watch it. I I, I don't know. I uh, you know what I mean. I experience it before you, of course, but like when the video is going on, you're getting a genuine live reaction to what I'm doing. And then, you know. To play through the game, various mechanics will be explained. In 428, you follow the stories of multiple protagonists at once. Your decisions impact their experiences as you read the story. What does the day hold in store? The fate is in your hands. Hopefully you can see them all through the end. Shinya and... Shinya Kano and Achi Endo. Am I checking out Kano's story? Ah, oh, I can't do that one. That's a protagonist face if I've ever seen one. Just two more minutes to go. Shinya Kano noted the time of Dan on his watch, scowling at the slow creep of the second hand. The time was 9.58 a.m. Furrows of, cons of consternation creased his forehead. I, that's a, that's a very, I've heard, I've seen it before, but I don't know when I have. He wasn't nervous, but he knew better than to expect everything going smoothly, everything to go smoothly. Keeping a level head was, pro was proving rather difficult. There was no room for failure. Lives were on the line here. Guide his surroundings. Was the perp really going to show up? When? Where would he be coming from? How long would he... How would he make his approach? The Shibuya scramble was as, pa as packed as ever. Throng of people crossing this way and that, blissfully unaware of the dozens of detectives hidden in its midst. <clears throat> All right, another minute and a half. Kano glanced down at his watch yet again. A mere 30 seconds had passed. Detective Kano had been with the enforcement arm of the Shibuya's criminal affairs section for a year now. But he'd never been part of an operation this big before. He eyed the young woman standing beside the statue up ahead. She was small enough to get lost in the crowd as she carried a nondescript attache case. <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Hitomi Osawa, age 19. The attache case in her hands contained full, fi uh, full 50 million yen cash. Is a little less than five million dollars. Adjusting, yeah, yeah, right. Yesterday, her twin sister Maria had been kidnapped. This was the ransom payment. The culprit had called Hitomi last night at home, referring to her by name and telling her to wait by the statue of Hachiko in Shibuya. Oh, that's really sweet. The Hachiko story. It was almost time, but nothing. Kana was standing, it was staring fixedly at the second hand on his watch when a homeless man sitting on the sidewalk murmured just loud enough for him to hear. Come on, Kano, quit looking at your watch so much. What if the kidnapper sees you? That's my that's my homeless guy voice. Kano tried to look at it, look nonchalant as he lifted his eyes, but the scruffy character continued. You're too nervous, just relax already. You're the one acting suspicious, Hasayama. Kano frowned. Why would some homeless guy be talking to me? Yuji Sayasama was the senior officer of the Shibuya Precinct's criminal criminal affairs division, five years older than Kano. Okay. Uh, responsible for the safety of approximately 200,000 people in 32 neighborhoods, including Uehara, Uguisu Danicho, Udagawacho, Ebisu, Ebisunishi, Ebisuninami, 
Oyamacho, a lot of Japanese names that I've never seen before. Sorry, I'm not uh, hot to die. Higashi. It's all in alphabetical order, really, or some alphabetical order. He always went in with a little overboard with the disguises. He claimed it was all part of the job, but word around the station was that he just liked playing dress up. Hey, pal, spare some change. Sasayama lurched on his feet and shuffled close to Kano. Hey, knock that off. Fittingly for the pat for the part, Sasayama reeked pretty badly. Well, ain't so ain't no sus ain't so suspicious now, huh? He clung to Kano with mock camaraderie, despite the younger man's attempts to pull away. Come on, Sasayama, cut it out! Sasayama's blithe confidence rattled Kano's nerves. Of course, there was good reason for that confidence. This was Kano and Sasayama's jurisdiction, but they were positioned a good distance from where the handoff was to take place. The statue of Hachigo was surrounded by elite investigators from one of HQ's special investigation teams. Okay. Uh, the part, yeah, the really, it's really sad. Air station, yeah. Kano and his partner were just there to provide backup if the kidnapper attempted to flee. Look, just try to relax, we'll be fine. So I go to tough guy voice. Sasayama gave him a wink. A moment later, the radio squawked into Kano's ear. Alright, everyone, it's time. Keep your eyes open. Oh. The voice coming through the earpiece was Koji Kuze, HQ's operations director. The last year, he'd been the Shibuya Precinct's head detective and Kano's supervisor. I don't know. You don't know when the perp is going to make contact. That's as close, I'll, as, close as I can get to anything different. Don't let your guard down. Kuze's low gravel. Oh, okay, I guess that one's more fitting than Kano's here. You don't sound too worried, Kuze. Kano winced at Sasayama's words. How could the man be not so nonchalant? The appointed, the appointed time had come and gone. Something should be happening. Whap! Kano smacked himself in the thigh to release a little tension. The sound was louder than he intended. Through the suit, he hid his muscular physique. It did little to dampen the noise. Though the suit did. Okay. He needed to stay focused. Might be called him action at any moment. The department handled abduction cases according to a certain, according to a certain standard investigating investigation procedure. Was it an attempt to extort money, or was the motive something personal? The answer to that question determined how they deal with the criminal. And based on the investigation team's initial findings this time around, they probably weren't dealing with a professional kidnapper. Still, in all likelihood, it was someone with, a, with quite a long rap sheet. Probably someone who knew the family, but so far they had few leads on who might bear such a grudge. When the situation, with the situation so unclear, the plan was to apprehend whoever came to make the handoff on site. If the culvert ran with the money, there'd be no guarantee of the hostage's well-being. Hmm. Still nothing. Sasiyama muttered. There he is. He's here. Because they broke in, his voice spiking into an excited chirp. Oh, okay. Suspect is a young male in his 20s, wearing a bandana and orange hoodie. Kuze, not only calm and stoic, was now squawking like an excited child. That only happened when he got particularly looked up. Kano and Sasayama steeled themselves. They could see the subject now. A 20 something male nonchalantly approached Itomi to talk to her. Alright, people, be ready to grab this guy. Because they were stationed in the Global Command Center, not far from the inter intersection. Keeping tags and tabs on the situation via video surveillance from the camera team. The young man started speaking enthusiastically to Hitomi. The detectives watched, uncertain. Was this really the kidnapper? I guess I'll do B. Situation still wasn't entirely clear. You need to get a better look at things. 
The newcomer held a bundle of letter-sized paper, which he showed to Hitomi as he went on talking. He tried to hand her one of the papers, but she pointed, pointedly ignored him. Undeterred, the cat man kept trying to foist it off on her. Hitomi refused to respond, becoming as motionless as a statue of Hachiko behind her. But finally, the man gave up and walked away. Guess it wasn't him. Kind of felt the tension of the moment linger down his spine, linger in his spine. The guy must have been hitting on her. Something. The guy must have been hitting on her. Now, I, right now, I'm not very good at doing the different voices. I'm sorry. <laughs> to the end of the day, you know. I mean, she's pretty cute and all. He had a point. Though, of course. Something Sasayama's voice made Kano brace himself. She's got nothing on my Michan. Michan was Sasayama's wife. They'd gotten married just last month. Let me tell you, Kano, married life is the best. You gotta hurry up and get it to try for yourself. This is Sasayama's favorite topic lately, and Kano was getting more and more fed up with it. Sasayama, come on. Just knock it off already, okay? The phrase has become a common refrain of his since the department had partnered them. Fine, fine. Let's talk about your girlfriend then. Huh? Now, he can't be serious. Sasayama leaned in close again. What's she like? We're not having this conversation. Kind of muttered, looking away. Ah, uh, come on! He's still playing the homeless troublemaker. Show me your phone. Let me, play, let me see your lock screen. Huh? Sasayama pawed for the phone. Gotta pick a girl in the lock screen, yeah? I do not. But he did. Scary how on the mark Sasayama's instincts were. Hey, cut it out. We're in the middle of an investigation. I am investigating. Uh, phone from his pocket. His face scrunched up with astonishment as he looked at the lock screen. The heck is this? It, it's not... Ain't this Masami Nagahama? National Star. Oh, that's cool. Kind of realized he had to bite the bullet. No, that's my girlfriend. Her name's Rumi, and she's Sasayama. Cut him off. Tell me, say Masami Nagahama, the famous actress, because this is right here is Masami, Masami Haga Nagahama. Like I said, you sly old dog, trying to make like you dating Masami, Masami Nagahama. I'm not. I mean, I guess Rumi does kind of look like her. Sasayama let out a huff. For real? You really don't think I'm gonna fall for this? You really think I'm gonna fall for this? It's not gonna fall for, I swear. Sasayama scowled, unconvinced. Alright, then why don't you marry her? Kano stammered, but he had no answer. The truth was, he would have happily married her already, but there were obstacles that needed to be overcome. Okay, playtime's over. Let's focus on the job. Sasayama handed back Kano's foam and turned his gaze to Hitomi. Kano let out a quick, uneasy sigh. But his shoulders did feel looser. Maybe Sasayama had been trying to relieve a bit of the tension. Maybe he should be grateful. By now, several minutes had passed since the guy with the papers had gone away. He peered at Hitomi. The strain on her face was visible. In addition to the weight of the attaché case itself, the 5,000, 10, the 5,000, 10,000 yen bills that had earned 6 kilos. Her slender arms must have been getting tired. Still, she refused to set the case down. She wasn't taking any chances with her sister's life. The kidnapping case had begun the day before, around 7 p.m. This is MPD Dis Dispatch. The Shibuya Precinct is reporting a missing person believed to be an abduction. Subject is Maria Asawa, a 19-year-old student at Midoriyama Academy. Last seen at the LL Diner near campus. A man was allegedly seen forcing her into a car nearby. All officers in the vicinity report to the scene at once. That's my best radio voice. Kano and Sasayama had been working with a burglary case in Jigamai, Jigamai's 5th district when they got the call. The two arrived at the LL Diner at 7.15 p.m. At roughly the same time, several other officers showed up to secure the area, blocking off entry to nearby roadways and monitoring the surrounding establishments. 
Inside the restaurant, Kano and Sa Sayama were by, by the girl reported kidnapping. It was the victim's twin sister, Hitomi. Tell us about when Maria was taken, starting from the very beginning. Kano said, keeping his voice low. Take a break from this really quick, guys. I'm sorry, it's my, it is hot and I'm getting exhausted, sorry. Let's take a break for a little while. Thanks, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. 20 minutes, that's not bad. Later.